Hey, hey, it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. Look at this cake I just made. You're supposed to wait till it cools to ice it, but I just had to know how it tastes before I like serve it. So let's see here. I never made carrot cake before, but I was, it's springtime. I'm in the mood. Mm. Okay, you can't really improve upon a still warm baked good. So that's amazing. I don't know, we'll see how it is when it cools. Tastes like five out of five. I'll link the recipe below, it's off of Pinterest. But anyway, let's stop waving the fork at you. I also have some strawberry lemon basil water. Oh my goodness, that is so good. <laughs> it has like a brown butter glaze icing on the top. Wow. I'm not even gonna tell Josh it's carrot cake and see what he thinks. <laughs> Do you think I can trick him? If I told him it's carrot cake, he'd be like, forget it. But I think he would like this. Um, but yeah, my cousin's coming over. We have something exciting that we're going to be working on. Can't wait to show it to you all. I'm just wearing my Made for This Moment tee that was with my Inherit collection. But I put this dress on that I just recently sewed. Check out that video. Um, and I was feeling a little plain, so I just decided to throw the tee on top. So it kind of looks like I'm wearing a skirt. Nope, it's a dress. And Josh is going to take care of the kids tonight. So me and Jaina can have the whole evening to ourselves. And well, we'll be with you guys, of course. But anyway, <laughs> should be a fun girls night. Is yeah. that furry thing the mic? Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't really need it. It's for wind, it's called a dead cat. <laughs> it looks like a dead cat. Um, okay, why don't we sit down and see what it looks like. The kids are still here, so we can't film right Should away. I like have my notebook? I have all the definitions in case we need to. Oh, you have them written down. Wow, you're like all prepared. Um, let's just put these. We need a staging budget, so we have a something to sit our cups on. We just need a budget in general. It's way, way days today. Like, what are you doing? it's like Amazon Prime Day, but with Wayfair. Oh. I didn't get anything. I wanted, I wanted to get dining chairs, that, but. I've never bought anything off of Wayfair. Yeah, Josh is like, oh, I, I bought this rug up, came off of Wayfair. Um, but no, Josh was like, why would, why, why would you buy new dining stuff when you can have the, when we can wait and when we redo the whole kitchen yeah. and get new stuff. But we're not gonna redo the kitchen for probably two or three years, so. Oh, yeah. I have, there's no timeline on my kitchen redo. <laughs> I wish there was. Eric's like, it's fine. I was like, well, it functions, but that's about it. Yeah, oh my goodness. I guess when it started, this is my cousin. Do you want to introduce yourself? You're not seeing double, by the way. <laughs> yeah. This is supposed to be like a play date, chit chat, super chill, like we invited you guys over to listen in and eavesdrop. This actually could potentially be a new series on my channel if we like it, if you guys like it. We'll see how it goes. There's no pressure for us to like it or for you guys to like it. Um, we're just gonna have fun. It was something we dreamed up and here we are. <laughs> and if you stay till the end, we'll tell you about the title and how it all came about with the Honey I'm Homemaker thing. It's actually really hilarious and there's definitely some <laughs> God, God stuff in there. But anyway, why don't you tell everybody who you are so, I mean, they're sick of hearing about me, so <laughs> you're the new face of the Yeah. Block. So, my name is Jaina Burkholder. I am Megan's cousin. So we've been friends since she was born. Um, I have two boys. Jack is six and he's in kindergarten and Finley is four. Um, I have a little sewing business that I do from home, but I pretty much just keep my house and raise my boys. My husband is a mechanic at a local body shop that his father started many years ago. Yeah. But he's pretty busy, so yeah. I feel like you guys are just as busy as us, but just with like maybe different things. You don't keep yourself I'm as busy as busy. me. As I'm honestly. boring. <laughs> yeah. Eric's busy, but I'm home a lot. <laughs> and you like it that way, though. I do. Yeah. I, I, I like to be home. Yeah. If I'm too busy, I get stressed and grumpy. She's the big cousin, so she's the role model, and yeah, anyway. <laughs> you know how to edit your life a little more so that... I don't know. I just, I just, I'm boring, I guess. I don't have a lot going. You know? <laughs> but I thought it'd be so fun to do these mom chats with somebody else's perspective. I've been doing Mondays with Megan type of stuff here for a while where I, yeah, just bring up topics and we chat about them and you get to hear my opinion. But me and Jaina are so, Jaina and I, are so similar in so many ways. We grew up in the same area. We're about the same age. Our families are about at the same stage of life. But we could not really be more different in a lot of things, like in our interests and our hobbies and our um, homemaking styles, our parenting styles, everything. So I think it'll be great to have another voice because we'll be, yeah, it'll be nice to hear our balance a little bit more. And you get to have a different Mennonite's opinion and you can see that, you know, we're not, de we're definitely not all the same, even though we may have grown up pretty similarly. Yeah, so. there, we have a lot of simula similarities. But yeah. we are very different. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out. Anyway, enough about us. You'll learn much more about Jaina as we get into it. Um, we have like a list of so many topics. Anyway, yeah. so we're committing to eight for now. And then after that, we'll reevaluate, see if we enjoyed it, see if you guys enjoyed it, and we'll go from there. But today, I thought we could talk about comparison culture, mommy wars, and just 
are each of our own individual maybe weaknesses and superpowers. Comparison culture is the phenomenon of social media pitting us against each other by comparing our lives to the faked and curated lives of others. Wow. That's what people said. Did you get good grades in speech class? I think so. <laughs> I feel like you would have. Creative writing in speech class, I think I did. And Bible memory long, too, because that was a memorized script. I did quizzing thing. for one year. Yeah, that's true. We went to high school together too. She was a grade older than me. But anyway, before we get too deep into this, we thought we would, since our little show, we're calling this episode, whatever it's called, Honey, I'm Homemaker, we thought we'd each throw out a homemaking tip each each episode. So Jada, <laughs> she's like, I have nothing to share. And then she showed up and she was telling me about it and she didn't know I was recording. So I didn't. Here you go. This is what she was saying. I don't have a whole ton, but I don't want this to like glare in the camera. Oh, my household tip. Okay. I still Whoa. cannot. Ice cubes <laughs> or, the, or clean your microwave. Like, clean your microwave, microwave as soon as it splatters. Do not walk away. Clean it oh. right away because if you leave it hardened, yeah, that's true. I do you do that actually? Yes, because, and I realized I do it because Eric uses the microwave like once a month and every <laughs> time he does, it's like dried on stuff because I don't notice it. And that's what made me think of it this week when I saw the crusties. I was like, so like none of the tips, none of the tricks, none of the boil the water and then wash it down. Just like, no, just do it right away. Right away. And okay. it wipes off so easily. Okay. Well, is it recording? That. Yes. It is. <laughs> Now you know how she actually is, so she's actually I was like, I was like, is it recording or is it? I'm just going to pretend it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Works perfect. Anyway, so I'm definitely going to try that out because I'm more, I always like put the, I boil the water like twice a month and it, try to get it to come off the microwave. So yeah, if I put my microwave, it better be spotless because <laughs> I clean up every time. And if it's not spotless, I know who it was and it wasn't me. I know people who use their microwave as like a hiding spot no, for no, stuff. That's so really no judgment if that's you. I, I, you a little bit not Jada she I'll, I'll put stuff in my oven <laughs> I've never done either of those actually because I've heard of too many horror stories but well, you just I don't know I have a dishwasher so that that, that works for a multitude yeah. it covers up a multitude of sins um so that's yeah back to the comparison culture and everything you had some notes didn't you too yeah but oh, you wait, didn't say your tip oh, I didn't say my tip I'm getting all scatterbrained here um yeah I don't want to I can't wait <laughs> Jason knows about about this. Exactly. We hang out pretty often anyway, so now we'll have to save our interesting conversations for this. Yeah. Um, but, okay. So you guys all know that I love my loops on my phone cases. I actually got you into loopy cases, yes. I think, a while back. I got sick of loopy just because they had the same, like, 10 prints or whatever, so I started branching out and trying to find something that was a little more, like, cheap, cost-effective, whatever. And I found these loops. They are awesome. They came in a pack of 12. Make sure you take one home. Yes, I want one because I miss um, my You have to test it out. But anyway, I realized this past week how much I missed my loop because <laughs> Easter Sunday I not only cooked pork loin and potatoes I also cooked my phone <laughs> okay we have a new phone I can't believe I did this it's such a Megan blonde thing to do but we have a new stove you guys have seen it and I always forget which knob is for which burner and I had my phone propped up with my loop as my recipe for the gar garlic asparagus I was making and I turned on the wrong burner and I was busy. Josh's brother and sister-in-law were here and all of a sudden I smelled smoke. I'm like, Josh, what is burning? And he runs over to the stove and there's just smoke pouring out of my phone. It melted off the whole camera, everything. It was nuts. Um, so the funny part was it still worked. That is so weird. I it is so and my crazy. Phone, like I, I could navigate it and everything. He said, your phone has overheated and I shut down. I'm like, <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. I cooked it. It was all melted and everything. It melted off the camera and all that. But apparently the brains inside it were still good to go. Um, but of course I had to spend another like 800 bucks on a new phone. So. Oh, you got a new phone now? Yes. I'm back. Phone. Yes. It's not charred. So. That's Back to business as usual. So that's my tip. One, don't cook your phone. And two, um, try out these loops. I'll link them down below. I think they, like I said, come in like a 12 or 16 pack and there's all different colors. I hate my case. It's like an otter box, but it's the only thing that's it's Megan Josh proof. approved. Yeah, it's Josh approved and Megan proof until you try to cook it. But yeah, so check those out. I saw a couple of you asking on Instagram about them. Now you know where they're at. So anyway, Let's get into the whole mommy culture stuff. So you, what, did you have anything really burning on your heart before we get into it? Uh, I don't think so. I was thinking about it a lot this week, obviously. Yeah. Do you feel like it's something that's in your, in your life at all? Like, okay, first of all, do you have Instagram? Yes. Do you, how do you feel when you come off of Instagram? Do you feel like inspired or do you feel kind of like down about your life? I know everybody comes, comes at it from a different way, you know? I mean, sometimes when I see the fancy houses and stuff, I feel like like my house is trash but as far as 
feeling shamed by other moms on Instagram, I, I don't really. Like, I follow people that tend to be encouraging um, and uplifting and I'll often come away thinking, you know, I could do better in an area or I could improve in that area, but I don't often come away feeling like I was preached to or shamed um, from other people on Instagram. I feel like we both do a good job at like curating who we follow yeah, and it's, it's something yeah, it is. It, it, like, I am so sick of so many people bashing Instagram and social media. Like, I get it. It's definitely a, it can be a really bad yes. place. But I think it starts with you if you want to have a good experience. And yeah, it's follow less people, follow people that lift you up or give you good things to think of. Maybe not just people that are just like, you know, slapping you on the back and high-fiving you all the time. Like, convicting is yes. good, but, you That's know. exactly what I was going to say. The opposite of mommy culture isn't flattery and like, oh, you're doing such a good job, like... And like lying to someone and saying, oh, that's fine. It doesn't matter if your kids eat nothing but cookies all day. And like, you know, like lying and condoning sinful, not that eating cookies all day is sinful, but like condoning sinful behavior is not okay either. Yeah. Or praising lackadaisical parenting. Or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's both sides of the spectrum can be wrong. Right. Right. So what's the middle line then, I guess, is like... That's the question. Yeah. We all want to be that person too. We almost made our first topic be about friendships because you need a good friend or two in your life that can just tell you how it is. Sometimes that might be a sister or someone, but somebody who like, you know, you don't have to put on a front and that kind of thing who can let you know, maybe not say you're terrible at this or that, but like just encourage you and like uplift you. What's the other word I'm looking for? Inspire. Exhort, <laughs> exhort, inspire you to like to be better. And they say you're some of the five people you hang around the most or something. I don't know if I believe that completely, but I definitely think when I'm around like other moms that are trying their best and are doing a good job, it like motivates me to try yeah, to absolutely. do better. And that's a good thing. It's not like, oh, I feel bad. It's just like, wow, she does good, good at this or that and I want to be yeah. that way too. And you can encourage someone without shaming them. Yeah. If yeah. someone comes to you, if they ask for advice, you don't want to just say, oh, it's fine, it's fine. No, like there's a place to give someone critical or criticism, constructive criticism. Um, and still try to be encouraging to them at the same time. Um, shaming is never necessary. Yeah. Well, you were bringing up a quote. We both, well, did you read the whole Emma's for Mama Yeah, book? I listened to it, the audiobook, yeah. Yeah, I can link that too. But um, I, you li oh, you should listen to it. It's so good because she uses, like, it's her, she yeah. narrates it herself. So, it's so she really uses good. the right inflection and stuff. Yeah, yeah. She had, like, she writes with humor and stuff. So, I really yeah. enjoy it. Which you'll quickly learn she's the funny one. So. <laughs> I don't know how After you listen up in front of the camera, yeah. yeah I'm a learn. little wooden right now, maybe. <laughs> Okay. She's shaking in her boots. I'm a, I'm no. a little shaky. No, it's all good. But anyway, I have the book. I read about half of it. Um, and you said you listened to it all. Yeah. And you have brought up a quote, and I thought it was really good. Discerning between the like feeling yeah. shame and when it's God's the Holy Spirit conviction and everything. Yes, what, there's a difference between say? being convicted of sinful behavior in your life and then just being shamed for something that really doesn't matter. Just someone else's opinion. Yeah. Have you ever felt... Um, not convicted but the other one like shamed yeah like, i was thinking about that okay. there was a time that i felt shamed for a decision that i made actually there's two times the first time was when i had finley he was a c set i had to have a c-section for him and i tried everything to get him to flip you know like laying upside down on an ironing board. oh we were praying yeah, yeah. No, i mean nobody um, wants to have i did the version the version procedure in the hospital um but when i went to so i was going into the hospital i was being like booked in checked in to have the c-section the one nurse kept going on and on about this procedure i wouldn't even know it's not even a procedure i would call it a ritual that she thought that is so important that she would never have a c-section without trying that first and it always works and blah 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 and i was just like excuse me there's worse things than a c-section and i don't care if it works like i don't want what was the specific thing can it, you say it was called moxie bustion like you basically ordered these mushrooms on amazon and then like burned them at your toes and let the smoke and it was supposed to like align your inner energies and i'm just oh, like dear. no like i didn't want anything to do with it but i did feel like shamed by her kind of because i was already feeling guilty and you i didn't just, want that for your baby, no no but. I, but i had made the best decision that i felt like i could and yeah, even after he was born, there was not only because of her, not, it was just like, I felt like I failed a little bit because I couldn't have a baby naturally, even though it was nothing that I don't think I could have done about it. I chose what I felt was the safest. And like, to me, I'm like, this seems so illogical. Like you got him here safely. He was breached. There was nothing you could do, blah, right. blah, blah. But at the time I can totally get it. I would feel the exact same way yeah. I feel. Yeah. And yeah. the other time was one time my boys were outside and I won't, it's kind of a long story, but they were playing and they're riding their dirt bikes. 
their little battery operated dirt bikes. And her boys are super like active. They are. Hard. Yes. And yeah, they were creative. being, I thought they were being safe. Like I knew what they were doing, but the one neighbor lady had a problem with what they were doing. And she came over and let me know that she had a problem with what they were doing. And I said, okay, well, if you have a problem with it, then I'll tell them to stop. But I was not going to admit to her that it was unsafe. That's what she kept saying. It's unsafe. It's unsafe. I was like, well, I didn't think, I don't think it is. You know, there's a risk when you let your kids play outside, they can get hurt, break a bone or something on the swing set. You know, there's always risk but I would rather take the risk of them getting hurt within reason than the risk of them staying inside all day melting their brains on screens. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, with when you have two boys, there's risks. Oh, so man. So she, I mean, she was nasty. Like, so then you, okay, first you feel like embarrassed, shame. Oh, I was bit. horrible embarrassed. I was crying. I mean, she was just nasty. And there was no reason for it. Like, I'm not a perfect mom. Like, I make mistakes. And, you know, maybe there was other things where she could be, but what they were doing was fine. I mean, I called Eric and he actually came home and went and like over to their house and talked to her husband because oh, wow. it was just like aggressive. So it really did hit you. Oh, I was a wreck. Like it was aggressive. I mean, if someone threatens to call. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. If they like, would bring that up, I would be But I found too. out then from the other neighbors that sh that's just how she treats people and it wasn't just me. So that made me feel a lot better. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I definitely you, felt shame. You have to take that and you have to like filter it and be like, am I being a bad mom or yeah, not? And, yeah. like, and clearly you knew that was not from God. That was not like, right. yeah, that was completely yeah. out of the it's line. It's not like I'm a perfect mom, but in that instance, I didn't feel like they, yeah. It was just, yeah. she was um, very mean. I think um, sometimes that I felt shame and maybe not like the bad shame, but like the good, like just like a little nudge, a little Holy Spirit conviction is like when you're sitting with friends at like a play date or something and they're like, talking about they did this or that with their kids or their child was naughty and they sat down and they talked with them about this and it'll just make me think oh wow i'm so busy this week i didn't i didn't take the time you know when so and so was naughty to you know really dig into it i just said stop and you know went on or like it just reminds me sometimes like yes i know in the back of my head already that i was really busy that week and then hearing other people say what they've been doing or what they had time to do and then it makes me feel um a little pricked, I guess you could say, but it's actually a good thing because it yeah. keeps me in check. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I'm so big on priorities and I like just, I know I'll never get this little kid stage back again. So I'm always like super careful. I'm very intentional. I just filmed a plan, a uh, monthly reset video. And, um, I to try to be very intentional with my time because I have to be, that's how I get things done. But, um, then it's just a reminder to me to make sure that I, um, put in time for things that really matter. And I always am always looking for signs that I have my balance out of whack because I'm really, I'm so scared of that. I'm so scared yeah. of my kids being 25 and they're like strangers to me or something, or we don't have a good relationship or just more of a distant relationship or something. So I'm always hyper aware of that to begin with. So it's not like people are sitting there trying to make me feel bad and I don't necessarily feel bad. I just feel like reminded again. Well, that's so, good. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I'm glad I have friends that are doing a good job, yeah. good job to spur me on to do better. Yeah. My friends the other weekend were talking about specific questions that they ask their kids when they get home from school. And I was like, oh yeah, I need to keep remi remembering to do that with Jack too when he comes home, like to ask him, you know, what was the best part of his day? What was the worst part of his day? Um, because you can't just say, how was your day? You know, yeah. and, or like these people that do their highs and lows at supper time. I, yeah. We don't do that, yeah. but it's a great idea. It's right. like, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. My friends are always like, really encouraging and I think we give each other a lot of feedback and yeah I don't feel like I get shamed from my personal friends like yeah ever. exactly which is great but I think like some people if they have too much of a imbalance of per like real life friends and like just Instagram acquaintances yeah. it can sometimes kind of be off track so if you're feeling that you have my permission right now to unfollow a hundred people if you need to um, it's fine they won't know it Holy Spirit versus like mom shaming the Holy Spirit like is um, should prompt of a specific sin, which would lead to confession and repentance and then a change. Mom shaming yeah. just, or mom guilt is just like that yucky, nasty feeling that results in no change. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> what can maybe, you change? Maybe you, you can't like change this. the C-section. Right. Yeah. Right. And you can feel guilt too and not change. I mean, you can be prompted by the Holy Spirit and not change, but a true Holy Spirit prompting should lead to change if you're following, true. following his voice like you should be.
Very, very true. Which brings me to the next thing I was thinking about. We're both, I was talking about how I'm busy. Jaina has her own business. Do you want to talk about that at all a little bit? You guys have, some of you have seen her work yeah. very firsthand. Some of you may even have it in your closet or be wearing it. Yeah, so I started making robes. Um, that sounded like I said robes. <laughs> <laughs> robes, um, like getting ready robes. Um, like lightweight, really soft, buttery, luxurious robes. I started making them after my son Finley was born. Um, for friends, I think one of the first ones I made was for you and I yeah. made for my sister and people just loved them and they were like, hey, I want one and I want one to give to my sister. So I just kept making them and then Megan shouted me out on her YouTube way back yeah. and then you guys started asking me to make That's them for great. you and then I got my brother-in-law to build me a website and now I can just sew at my own pace, yeah. list them on the website, people can buy them if they want to. And I love it. Yeah. I think your your days look a lot like mine probably, but then in the afternoons when I'm doing my do you sew all day or it's mostly in the afternoons? Um, I mean you have a kindergarten it's now. It's kinda so it's changed, changed a lot yeah. now because it used to be like almost strictly at nap time. Now the boys will go outside and play in the backyard and I'll sew or they'll be playing in the living room and I'll sew. Like they don't need me minute by minute every more anymore. So I have to keep remembering your youngest is the age of my oldest. Yeah, so they it's don't totally is different. Every, like they don't take naps every day yeah, anymore. Exactly. So it, but it you built a successful business over nap time, so it can be done. It can be done. Um, I mean did just you ever, success. Did you ever <laughs> did you ever list on Etsy or did you always no, have your own website? So no, that was really cool. I think I started to but never I never sold any robes on Etsy. Like yeah. it just which is great because they take a huge chunk. Yeah. Which I guess there's website fees and stuff you have to do. There but, there are website yeah. fees. That's another thing. Mennonites are super at networking we have somebody for everything yes um her uh my brother in law, -in -law built both of our websites yeah. so we my sister-in-law takes my pictures oh, that's um, right. my yes. sister does like any design work and she like models for you she models for me sometime um yeah. yeah who else i don't know it's just amazing though megan's I, my marketing oh, yeah. <laughs> i keep her busy you guys keep her busy with robes yeah. yeah you're as busy as you want to be is that right correct? i can set my own pace more or less because if my stuff is out of stock you know, people might be annoyed, but it's just out of stock then, and I'll get more when I get more. Um, yeah, I can only sew exactly. as fast as I can sew, and I refuse to sew all day long because even like physically, my back hurts. And have you ever experienced mom shaming in the area of like, okay, first of all, if you're not a Mennonite, you might not understand our culture very highly esteems um, stay-at-home moms. And I love that actually about yes, our culture. Yes. Like I, don't, I think it's great. I'm not saying that if you are not a stay-at-home mom that you're wrong, but I think that's something so cool about our culture that. I, most moms are stay-at-home moms, um, and if they have a you know side hobby or projects or what is it like side businesses that yeah. they want to do, they often do it from home or like the medical field. Some people will yeah. you know try to keep that going, maybe an evening here or there and stuff like that. Yeah. But we're pretty hands-on moms as a whole yeah. in our culture. And our family, I think our our moms and our grandmas like we have a history of industrious women finding <laughs> ways to make some extra spending cash yes. from home. I mean, my I mom quilted. Love to convince grandma to be on our. Oh, but she would not. They would love her. But she's love her. awesome. Cool. She made like lampshades and like yeah. all kinds of stuff. But yeah, your, yeah. Your mom did the pumpkins, like the little stuff. Yeah, my mom would say I get my creativity from her, from grandma. But my mom was super creative. Like when I taught school, she always had yeah, all kinds of is. ideas for me. She might not be like crafty, but she's very creative. Yeah. Oh, your mom. What my does mom she does do? it all. She, yeah. She made magnets she quilted pillow tops when i was really little yeah oh you guys have seen my christmas hauls when i come back from the weaver gatherings yeah. and i have all these diy projects yeah people are on to stuff it's crazy everybody yeah. i don't know it's in our blood kind of i think we just are the types of people that um like to have a little project going or something yeah. you need that creative expression in your life a little bit i think yeah. but i think i don't know how other cultures are i think sometimes specifically the mennonite culture i know rachel from Zim Colorado, she's yeah. talked about this before about getting flack for um, having owning a business yeah. and stuff like that. I don't that. really get that. And so, yeah, do you think that's because you've stayed pretty small or do you think it's the people you surrounded yourself with or? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of my really close friends have way more kids than I do, so they wouldn't have that like margins in their life to do that. Like, my one friend actually helps me sew and she has. Five kids. She has five. She yeah, and she twins. still finds the time to sew yeah. for me, and she, but she loves it. Like she yeah. purposely makes the time. Some of my other one, other friends, like they don't really, but they don't like. They support me. Like they'll buy robes and like ask me how it's going and stuff. And yeah, 
I don't really feel like they're judging me for it. Maybe they are and they're just really good at hiding it. <laughs> no, I don't think that. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like there's that whole thing, th this side versus that side, like, oh, stay-at-home moms have it so hard. Oh, working moms have it so hard. Like, we both have it hard. Like, let's just yeah. be honest. Um, let's stop comparing ourselves. Let's not, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be pitting each other against each other. I choose to take my advice from people that I see in their everyday life, like my friends. I see what happens when their child disobeys them, I see how they react to that. I see how they discipline when, you know, sibling fights and stuff. And I see that they're not perfect, but I see that they're trying their best and they love their children dearly and they would do anything for them. And yeah, that they're just people, just like me. They have their strengths and their weaknesses. And that's who I want to take my advice from. Very, not very true. People. Not just some buddy trolling you in your DMs or something. Right, not that you can't learn from people on Instagram. And the trolls might have a little bit of truth to what they say sometimes. I don't know. What I heard one person say, don't take hate from someone that you wouldn't go to for advice. Oh, I heard that too. Yes, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. Um, I did have a Bible verse I wanted to read here about, okay, so we're getting all this shit. You know, maybe we're feeling shame from these different places and stuff. Or we're not, like, we're, as moms, we can sometimes be insecure. Or, and, like, I'm not just talking to moms. House, wh whatever you are. A wife, a ha homemaker. We, I think we're all just a little bit insecure. We're a little bit lost. We're a little bit, like, are we doing the right thing at the right time? And like Because it's so huge. Yes. I mean, it's, these people's lives are, like... <laughs> We're responsible it's for that. crazy. It's like sometimes I just want my mommy, and I'm just yes, crazy. Yes, just, I know, I know. It's crazy. So I did find a verse in Deuteronomy. I wasn't even looking for this, and it came up. How do we know we're doing the right thing with our time? You know, every day. And I think there's just this is a good verse to keep in our minds, in the back of our heads. Deuteronomy 11:19. You shall teach them to your children. It's talking about God's laws. Talking of them when you are sitting in your house, and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Basically, we're like living out the gospel in front of our children. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're like preaching sermons and like it doesn't always look like we're sitting down and just like talking through everything, especially at this young age. We're literally just living the gospel in front of our kids. Mm -hmm. And so if we can keep a verse like that, just kind of in the back of our minds, it really puts a lot of things into perspective, yeah. I think. Um, I was on a podcast about YouTubing and she likes to ask, what's your YouTube superpower? So I thought it'd be fun if we could, since we're talking about like mom culture and stuff, every mom has their own superpower. Um, what do you think, feel like you are doing really good at or have done really good at that you want to keep continuing in? I think sometimes we can like push ourselves down or like, yeah, talk negatively to ourselves. I think it's sometimes good to say out loud yeah, the things we're good I about. So, so I challenge you guys that are watching, think about what you're good at. We can't all be good at everything. You know, there's like the book moms and there's like the craft moms that are always doing like DIYs and stuff. Not there's a like... book mom, not a craft mom. <laughs> Do you think the whole like putting yourself down can kind of come from our Mennonite culture a little bit? Like pride is such that like, a was... huge thing. That's probably a whole nother And you podcast. never admit your weaknesses and you... Well, you don't admit your weaknesses, but you also don't talk about your strengths. Like... Oh, that would be prideful. Yeah. yeah, yeah pride yeah. is such like... A... And it is. Like it's it's not good to be prideful, but... Honestly, it feels awkward to yeah, talk. Yeah, it yeah. does. So is that typical for everyone or is or that, that just a thing? thing? I don't know. I don't that'd, know. Be, that'd be an interesting can of worms to So open I don't up. know if I have a superpower, but if I were to pick one, I thought of two. Strength. That, <laughs> a strength. Um, I like to play with my kids. Like um, I was playing baseball with them this week and then I tried to bake cookies with them. I would not say it went well. So we'll stick to playing baseball and it's, we make up our own rules and whatnot, but they love it. And it's like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. It's not like I'm playing hours of baseball with my kids, but um, Finley had a hoverboard and I was determined to ride it because my four-year-old will not do something that I can't do. Like, I'm not ready for that yet. So I learned how to ride the hoverboard and they were like, oh mom, I don't know, you can stop, like, I don't know, and I'm shaky and slow, but I got it. And like, I don't know, they, they've laughed at me and we had fun doing that. Um, I like to play with my friend's kids. I'll yeah. find like an Easter egg hunt for them or whatever, like, and I, I swim with them all the time when I pull up at the pond when we go. Uh, and I can do that right now because I, because my boys are older and so that I can pour into my friend's kids and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Like, they're the best. Yeah, and like, wow, you're always going to be the favorite. Yeah, I know, that's my goal. Kids. That's my goal. Like, I want to be the favorite. I better be invited to all their yeah. weddings. <laughs> I just love how you are taking this season of life where you're at. Um... <laughs> Do you, I mean, do we want to even go there? Yeah, uh, I don't care. I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying my boys right now. Um, yeah, last year, well, I thought at this time this year I would have like a five-month-old, and that didn't happen. Uh, we lost the baby back in May, last May. So my life looks different than I thought it would, 
but I am thoroughly enjoying having two older boys. Um, I'm not in the toddler baby stage anymore, like I thought I might be, and it's great. Like I am enjoying it, and she's you know, such an example of taking lemons and making lemonade. Like you are really oh, no, living I, this, like I don't know, this like, stage that you're into the fullest. Like, like you're helping yeah. your friends that have twins out and stuff like that. Like yeah. I feel like you're doing. You're doing amazing and not just wallowing in maybe some disappointment and stuff. Yeah, it is like, disappointing and you know, we could try again, we could have another, maybe we will. I mean, we are open to that if that's what God wants. We're open to having a baby or trying again, but we're not maybe like, that pursuing that yeah. at this point. But yeah, that's a that's a That should be thing. our next topic. I think yeah. that would hit a lot of women, just like um family planning, miscarriage and stuff like that. Yeah, we could definitely but, Yeah, that's do what a I told the boys. They were more. like Jack was like, Mom. Logan and the girls really like you. And I was like, yeah, I was like, well, I can. I have time to play with them now and plan stuff. And, you know, some of the other ladies have newborns and they can't. So I can, so I, I do. Um, yeah. What was the That answer? is awesome. My other superpower. superpower yeah. Oh, apologizing. I, I, it's not hard for me to, I mean, sometimes I need a little bit of prompting. Like, okay, yeah, I need to apologize. But I, I feel like it helps so much. Like, just like restoring that bond, like if I lose my cool and yell at my kids or whatever, if I go back and apologize, like I feel like yes, a mistake was made, but if I would just ignore it and brush it off, you know, they yeah. forgive me, they're still gonna love me, but if I apologize for it, it's gonna like strengthen our bond even more. And like it's gotta be easier saying I'm sorry to a four year old than a 14 year old. Exactly. Like, if you've never done it before. Yeah. So start now, yeah. like I apologize to my boys probably too often. I mean, I tried to remember. I want them to feel guilt and remorse like when they genuinely sin and if, if I don't show them what that looks like, then they're not gonna either. Yeah. So that's one thing that I try to be intentional about. I feel pricked. No. <laughs> I, we did not say I love you a lot in our home, like where, where I was growing up, but we also did not say I'm sorry very often. And so it's something that, I mean, I love, is, my yeah. upbringing was wonderful. It was what, actually one of the best things. Living, growing up on a farm, I've talked about that before. One of the best things that's made me who I am. But yeah, that's something I would like to turn around a little bit. And it's hard. Ask Josh. He's like, who, if you ask him who apologizes quicker, it's definitely him. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good um, point. Um, for me, I think one of my superpowers was I always looked at it as a weakness and now I'm learning to use it in a good way as a mom and is the fact that I'm very stubborn and very like driven oh, yeah. and that yeah. actually works out some ways yeah. in parenting. It doesn't work if you have a child that you're like butting heads with and stuff as much but like when I decide okay we're gonna fix this habit or we're going to start something new or like I will stick with it and we'll accomplish it. We're gonna make it happen. Yes. And so I've used that in so many That's ways huge. Um, over the years like yeah. I don't know, you just need some tenacity sometimes. Oh, you're pricking me now. Because <laughs> oh, that's one thing I need to do better at is like, yeah, self-discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Our views on screen time, that would be another great topic to talk about, are very different. Um, and we're not very different, I guess, but the way we apply them is a little bit differently. Is I think our views are very similar, similar but how they are applied. Application, yeah. Um, could look a little different. Anyway, and so I think that's, some of you ask, how in the world can you do it without screens? And it's just like, well, I'm stubborn. <laughs> I'm stubborn yeah. like that. And like, I've learned, yeah, anyway, so that would be a whole nother topic um, to talk about at some point, but I, it's something I do want to use for the good, because I know as my kids get older, it's going to be um, easier to just like give up or like, ugh, you know, I have three kids now, they're running me down. It, does, it doesn't matter that much. I'll just let it go. Yeah. And I think if I can continue with that over the years um, and just like keep you know, it's like when I taught school, whenever we came back from um, Christmas vacation, January, like first, second or third, whatever it would be, it was always like boot camp. Like, okay, we're going to get back to the basics again. We're not going to, we're going to raise our hands every time, you know, all that stuff. And so I would regularly like get my kids in check and be like, okay, mommy's been letting this slide, but we do not do that anymore. I'm trying to think of a specific example because stories are always better, but like, um, oh, like leaving the park or something. I always say, hey, do one more fun thing and then we're going to go. And... Um, that used to always work, then they knew, okay, they had one more thing, they could they look around the playground, they shop out their last experience, what are they going to do, you know, then they do it, and then we go home. And lately, they've started to whine, and like, complain when it's time to go away from a friend's house, and whatever, and I've noticed, like, you know, I can't discipline them right there in front of their children and everything, but I can start working on that again when we're just there at the playground, just me and my kids and stuff, like, okay, you're going to, we're going to let you know, the other sibling play on the playground a little longer and we're going to sit on a bench and just wait or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like, and take care of it right then and there. Um, and so, yeah. Where was I going with that? Just the whole, like, being consistent, I guess, and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah. I was uh, convicted 
the other weekend by a friend in the almost exact same scenario. Jack was asking for a cookie and I was like, yeah, you can have one cookie. And he's like, two. And I said, one. And he said, two. And I said, one. And he said, three. And I said, one. And he said, two. And my friend was like, Logan, are you going to ask me more than once? And he was like, no. And I was like, yeah, I need to prove that my one means one. Like, obviously, he thought he could sway me. And... He, you know, that time he didn't because she was right there. Oh so my like, god, oh, but I give in. Like, I need to do better. Like, do better, Jaina. Like, no means no. Your struggle is that your kids are just so cute. It's fun. I know. They're so cute. <laughs> but he wants two cookies. How can I say no? And they're oh, funny man. too. Like, yeah, they'll just joke me yeah. at anything. Are you the disciplinarian in your relationship, or is that Eric's? I feel like he's probably stricter than me for the two hours a day that he's home. He's <laughs> he can be. He's yeah, not like he can like he tells me that I need to discipline more than I do, but it's hard because I'm home with them. It's so hard to be consistent. All, yeah. 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 So he would probably be, I would say, stricter. Yeah. I feel like for me and Josh it would be really hard to pick. I'm very strict about some things and he's more well, and whatever he, and about he, other things. Yeah, and he cares about different things too. Like I care more about what they eat. Like he doesn't really care what they eat because I mean, if they're following his. Oh, but they're not allowed to eat lunch. No, 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 no lunch in the Burkholder home. What that, are you that would not be allowed, right? No, Eric, you don't eat lunch. What do you eat? Lunch. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Eric doesn't eat lunch at work. No. What do you? What does he call it? Oh, is that supper time? Oh, we dinner. Don't eat yes, supper. Yes, yes we do not eat supper at our house. If you come to our house, we have dinner. Yeah, because we're holding <laughs> that. My word. Oh, oh we're not. <laughs> This is so, you can edit this out. No! The Sunday school lesson was the last supper, and I was sitting there chuckling. It's like, holy! Eric's over there in his Sunday school class being like, dinner! The last dinner! <laughs> I love it. Let us know down below. Is the last meal of the day supper or dinner? In the Mennonite world, it's supper, except for her husband. Except for Eric. Yeah. He wasn't born a Mennonite, I guess that's why. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yes. Adoption is a big part of your story and stuff, yeah, too. So, anyway, I yeah. I can't wait for you guys to get to know Jane about her. Yeah. She's a true gem. Um, oh. <laughs> should we tell, should we wrap up today's um, episode? What do we call this? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. That's what's so exciting about yeah. it, I guess. But um, we'll tell you about, guys a little bit about the title of our little show. We're calling it Honey, I'm Homemaker. So, how did that go down? We, neither of us really knew what we wanted to, we knew it wanted to be just about two. Cousins that are super comfortable yeah. with each other. We were talk. struggling. Like yeah. you sent me a whole list of stuff, and the other one was pretty plainly, right? Or so yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. And I said that I like pretty plainly and honey, I'm homemaker. And you were like, oh, that's so cute. How did you think of that? <laughs> and I was like, that was from your list. You thought of that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess it's meant to be. Yeah. So what happened was I was laying in bed and like I think Miller sometimes has trouble settling. It was like 10:30. He had been sleeping for like an hour and a half or so and he like woke up and just like in his sleep and stirred and so it woke me up he went right back to sleep again but it woke me up and I was laying in bed half asleep and I was just trying to think of like cool names and stuff for this I don't know what we're gonna show podcast I don't know what this, yeah I hate to call it anything because I don't want to put any like expectations on it but yeah so I was just like googling uh puns for home or homemaker or house or like different stuff and I guess that was one of them, and I just put it on the list, and like my brain totally forgot that I put it there. And then when you brought it up, I'm like, genius! <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> oh. But yeah, there's like I googled it, there was like nothing. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what becomes of it. I yeah. hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun. I mean, we had our husbands out with the kids, babysitting, and we get to sit and chat. Yeah. And yeah, just turn the camera on too. Yeah, so. this is like it's a win-win-win. Dreams are made up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening today, and if you like what I had to say and you want to hear more, <laughs> like this video and if you think someone else would enjoy it, share it with them. Comment below what you think your mothering superpower is because we would love to hear and I think that's a great way that you can kind of boost your self-esteem a little bit and get some encouragement as you go throughout your week. And if you enjoyed this conversation and it had nothing to do and you're not a mom yet or you know even maybe that's not even on your radar, you're a grandma or something and you still enjoyed it, that is totally fine too. No shame, you're welcome to come back yeah. too. And yeah, look for the next one and I guess Two Mondays from now, we'll try to be consistent for the yes. next eight times, I guess. I'll, I'll practice my closing out speech oh, a yes. little better. Oh, yes. We'll do this finesse yes. anyway, so. Thank you guys so much for being here. It means the world to us and joining in on this conversation. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.